I am going to show you how and why I've turned this Flash IC into a solid state drive with a file system that can be accessed by a computer. I'll try to explain what I've learned in a general way, but I've developed this stuff having specifically my little DIY computer here in mind. Check out the video links in the description if you want to find out more about it or if you want to build it yourself. Let's consider a RAM chip. It has 32K of cells that each can store a single 8-bit value. Each cell has an index or address. A CPU can access a cell by setting the RAM address lines, shown in blue here, and then signaling a read or write operation with these lines WE for write enable or OE for output enable, here shown in yellow. Usually the CPU's bus is connected to the red data I.O. lines of the RAM, so that the RAM can either put its data onto the bus or read the data that is currently on the bus. This flash I see here on the left, that also comes with parallel address and data lines, can be used just the same. In fact, the pinout looks pretty similar. The write process, however, takes longer and involves additional steps. This specific flash IC needs a so-called byte program command. That's just a fancy name for a series of write operations to certain fantasy addresses preceding the actual write operation. Usually this is followed by some sort of data polling to see when the device has finished its write cycle. This may look complicated, but these commands can be executed by any CPU, just with a simple sequence of instructions, as you can see here. So in principle, even my DIY CPU could store data permanently in its flash brain or erase certain parts of the flash. But in order to use our safe data in a meaningful way, we would need to keep track of important information ourselves. We need to remember to which RAM address a safe program should be reloaded, know its byte size and flash start address. Not very comfortable. And there are a couple of other issues when using flash. Prior to writing, a flash EEPROM has to be erased to the one state. This is because we can only write zeros. Erasing back to the one state only works blockwise for 4 kilobytes. So let's come up with a file system that takes care of all the cumbersome stuff and simply gives us commands like load, save, delete, directory and format that everyone expects. But be warned here, what I am about to share is just my keep it simple and stupid version of a linear file system and could surely be improved in many ways. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Ok, let's first reinvent a file header. 19 bytes for a name should be ok, followed by a terminating zero, followed by 2 bytes for the RAM start address and another 2 bytes that hold the size of the following data section. Now saving a program to our SSD area becomes very easy. We initialize a pointer to the start of our SSD and see if we read hex ff. And if we don't, we know that there's already a file existing there. We parse the header for its byte size and skip over it to the start of the next header and repeat until we find the end of the used SSD area and put our file there. Let's store some more files now. Loading a file back into RAM is also easy. We skip over all files stored in the flash, jumping from header to header. And as soon as we see the file names match, we copy the data section to the appropriate RAM address. And displaying a directory is a breeze too. Browsing from header to header, we print out file name, RAM address and byte sizes. Deleting a file is going to be the only tricky thing. The idea is to not allow for any holes in our used SSD area, so we will have to move data around when we delete a file. Let's visualize that. First we determine the start block of the file to be deleted and copy any data prior to that file into a RAM buffer. Next we fill the RAM buffer up with data from beyond the file's end. Then we format the first affected block to hex ff and write back the RAM buffer's content. Next, we copy the next 4 kilobytes of data we need to keep into our RAM buffer and format and write it back to the second affected block. We repeat this until we hit the end and have formatted the last affected block. For me, this is easier to see how it works by playing it back a bit faster. If we now compare with our initial state, we see that we have effectively moved down all the data we intend to keep and have sort of closed the gap. Note that deleting a file can become quite costly in terms of flash write operations. 
But the Flash datasheet promises us at least 10,000 write cycles. For some variants of this IC, even up to 100,000 cycles. So for practical means, for me it should be okay to delete a couple of files. Finally, let's have a look at how a delete operation works on my actual DIY computer here. We can take a look at the directory by typing d00r for run. Let's delete a file now. We just need to type e00r and specify a file name and hit enter. And as you can see, this takes a while. Let's have a look at the directory again. Okay, the file is gone now and we see that the number of free bytes has increased a bit. So I hope that you got something out of this little explanation. Let me know in the comments what you think about this bare metal version of a file system. Take care. Bye.